As we follow that dangerous winter storm moving across the country, this morning we have a look at the surprising ways climate change can affect snowstorms. It's part of our weekly series on how the warming planet is reshaping policy and lifestyles around the globe. NBC News meteorologist and our friend Bill Karens is back again. Hey, Bill. So when we think of global warming, I mean, I think we usually imagine more hot days, fewer cold ones, but that's not the whole story. As Joe just mentioned, it's also possible that this warmer climate actually makes these winter storms worse. Tell us about that and if that's part of what we've been seeing this year. Yeah, this is one of my favorite topics because we all have that family member or friend that every time it's super cold or snow, they're like, they're like, oh, what happened to global warming or bring mm -hmm. on global warming? It's freezing outside. So we all have we all know that person. The one thing that people don't quite understand is they think that they can really feel global warming. They feel like they can experience it. Do you know that since 1880, the planet has warmed up on average 1.9 degrees Fahrenheit, not Celsius, Fahrenheit, you know, the scale we use here in America. And on e average, since 1975, we're warming up about a third of a degree per decade. In other words, you can't feel it. it, it you know, when people say they can feel it, it, it's such a slow moving target that, that you know, that, that's why it's such a hard problem for everyone to uh, feel and to experience. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the impacts with these winter storms. Now, we do know that 90 percent of the warmth is being absorbed by the oceans. And so the oceans are the fuels, not just for hurricanes, but also for coastal storms. And especially for northeast snowstorms, we can turn these into snow machines because the moist air hits the Canadian cold air, which is still plenty cold enough because we've only warmed the planet up about two degrees on average. Major snowstorms are more likely um, to occur. And that has actually been factual. I mean, we have numbers that can prove it. Let's just look at Boston. And by the way, the snowstorm last week in Boston was their seventh biggest all time. Wow. Of their top five, three have occurred in the last 25 years. And if you look at actually going back for the top 10, eight of their top 10 have occurred in the last 25 years. And the same goes for New York City, too. We have about seven out of the top 10 snowstorms in New York City history is in the last 26 years. And these cities have records that go back 150 years. So, uh, yes, you can get bigger snowstorms because of climate change. All right, so anyone who has that relative, we're just going to have them clip this video and send it to them, and they can uh, say, there you go. There, yeah. Very helpful, Bill. Now, let's talk about another topic. On Monday, the White House announced it was sending more than a billion dollars to states to help clean up yeah. thousands of abandoned oil and gas wells that are leaking methane. So, Bill, we hear a lot about carbon dioxide as a dangerous greenhouse gas, but methane can be pretty potent, too, right? Yeah, I mean, there's more than just carbon dioxide for greenhouse gases. We know that water vapor is one, nitrous oxide, methane. Those are all our the greenhouse gases. Those are the gases that create the blanket in our atmosphere that trap the sun's heat. We need it, actually, to survive. That's why our planet can be warm. And as far as methane goes, the EPA said that about 10 percent of our emissions is methane. OK, so why do we care about that? Well, methane actually is a much more powerful greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. And it's actually 80 times the global warming potential over a 20-year period. Because, but the only thing that's different, the reason that you hear more about carbon dioxide is that methane in the air only stays in our atmosphere for about 10 years. So the half-life is much shorter. Carbon dioxide, on the other hand, stays in our atmosphere for 100-plus years. Mm -hmm. So if you go start your car up today and you're burning that fossil fuel, that carbon dioxide is going to be in the atmosphere for 120 years. If we have a methane that's leaking from a well, that will be on our atmosphere for about 10 years. So methane is more powerful, but it doesn't last as long. So uh, it's still very important that we get rid of methane as quickly as possible, too. Oh, yes, absolutely. All right, Bill, finally, quick last one for you at the intersection of climate change and Hollywood. We know Leonardo yes. DiCaprio is one of the most outspoken environmentalists now. He's received a really special award. Tell us about that. Yeah, from, you know, he's done, we have his Oscar speeches. He was a special envoy to the United Nations for climate change. And now we are hearing that the Royal Botanic Gardens in the United Kingdom is naming a tree after Leonardo uh -huh. DiCaprio. Now, this is a small tropical evergreen tree with beautiful yellow flowers that come out of the trunk. And here's the key to this one. This only grows in the Ebo Forest in Cameroon. Now, scientists are crediting DiCaprio for actually stopping logging in Cameroon, and they say that without wow. him, this whole area would be deforested, and there would be no such thing as the DiCaprio tree. Wow, that is very cool. Awesome. And that's Good for pretty him. amazing, the impact he's made. Yeah. All right, yeah. Bill, thank you so much. We love this segment. Great to have you on Thanks, again. Guys. See you in a bit.
Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.